Got your Link Super Tone Master 5 large font that you sent to me. Um, I'm not an expert at identifying these, so I have to resort to a chart. And this, this chart that you can find on the web um, is has most of most of the models on here. There's a few variations that may be missing, but um, if you follow this chart, um, you have a USA stamp, you have a, a facing on the side, you have a large font, a uh, regular size body, and not a wide tip, and it leads you down to this early Babbitt, which I've noted uh, made in the 80s. That means they were using Florida blanks sent to them after they bought out the link company and they finished them themselves. So the basic blank is nice and the baffle's nice, but their facing work is hit or miss. And this one does not have a great facing on it. What I have here is a measurement of your facing with the mouthpiece and this orientation. So this is your tip opening exaggerated. The dark blue line is your um, average of your left and right facing curve. So I get a tip opening that measures about 75, okay? And for a five, it should measure at 90. So it is smaller than marked. Um, and you thought it felt small. Um, the other issue is it, it is crooked near the tip. Um, Oops. And uh, that could, could have been from a drop because it's also got kind of a, a, a low spot here which could be from a drop and then might have been sanded or worn out or something. And you know, the shank's a little out of round too, which is also a bit of an indication that it's, it's had some abuse over its life um, and, and may have been corrected a little. Uh, so anyhow, if I put on this uh, you know, glass gauge that we use to measure facings and then drop in a larger feeler, like around 49, it leans to the left a little, and we go up a little bit more to 63, and it leans to the left a lot. It should be straight across, but this saying that the left rail is further away from the reed than the right rail at this point, and that can uh, hurt response and make it reed picky and even deal, it, it creates some chirps for some players. Um, the rest of the facing starts off, it's nice and even back here, so that looks pretty good. Now what I have on here also is the magenta curve, which is a target curve if you wanted me to open it up to spec. So the rest of this facing curve is pretty good, but it, it kind of flattens out coming towards the tip, which is also bad for altissimo. So that's why if we give it some little more curve, out to the tip rail that should clean up the altissimo response. The other issue is it's got a weird wear pattern on here and that'll clean up too with some facing work because right now um, it's got a low spot like right here that's not worn and then it's kind of worn on the outside of the tip rail outside here. So again this could have been from a drop or I'm not sure what but anyhow that's not that's not good. Um, when you uh, put a, a, a read on here, or this read template, um, you can see where the, you know, tip rail it does not match the contour of a read very well. It, it has a low spot here, so I can fix all that. It's kind of a high spot there. So uh, you're all set on that for facing. Just let me know if you want it opened up to a 5, which is a 90, or if you want to go a little further. Uh, most players like these in the 95 to 105 range so uh but you know opening up to a 90 would be a step in the right direction i think uh, the other is there is a worn tooth uh gouge in the bite area if you want this uh filled in i can do that but it's 30 dollars more you have to send some more money because it's more work but if you want to try it out first you don't think that'll bother you you can go ahead and try it without it and we could do that later so, um, yeah, let me know a target tip opening, and uh, I could take care of this. Okay, back to this uh, early Babbitt, marked as a 5, but only measures 75 at the tip. The owner wants it opened up to a 105, which is more like a 7-star. A, a um, 
and I, I recalculated the target curve. Here's the magenta, and that's quite a major change. It's like, you know, we're going up 30 thousands on the tip, so 30 thousands, it's about like that. So it's, it's my, it would be all of the tip rail, pretty much thickness, to do that by cutting. So uh, this is a good candidate to start out by uh, bending the tip open some. And uh, I don't do a lot of that. Uh, some guys do a lot more than I do. One, one issue that we'll look out for is when you bend open the tip, the weak spot is right here at the end of the bite plate. And he wants me to repair the, the bite plate. So um, you got to, you know, the, it might hinge here and create a little bit of a bump here, which we have to face out. Um, and it could crack the uh, bite plate, but I'm going to repair it. Any, I wasn't planning to replace it, but um, we'll see what happens. Plus, it's, uh, you know, the tip was crooked and it had a, had a misformed kind of a tip rail. There's nothing here that I'm scared of messing up because it's already messed up. So let's, let's get this started. We're, we're lower here than there. So, yeah, mini anvil. Uh, on a rag, so we're going to start out gentle and see what kind of progress we can make. So let's do a quick check. Eighty-three, and let's check the evenness. Okay, so I overcorrected on that side, which is fine because we're short of the target. Let me check for evenness first. We started out at 8 over here and, and 6 over here, and now we're like at 10 and 12 in the opposite direction. You know, this hammer has a soft nylon end and a metal, and I almost never use the metal end. Okay, it's pretty even at 11.9 and 12.1. Let's check the tip again. We're up to 89. Don't have to go all the way, but the more you go, the less metal you have to have to cut. Six. Still ninety six. <laughs> Still ninety six. Got some, you know, some dents in the uh, side rails, which will come out. You know, we'll stop short and face it the rest of the way. Nice to get it closer to a hundred. Ninety-eight. Bite place isn't cracking, so that's good. Still ninety-eight. So. Yeah, maybe a uh, bite plate is 
resisting. Okay, that jumped up like 105. <laughs> so um, what I can do is I can roll that back a little if it needed. And, uh, you know, I'll measure the facing and see where we're at. Okay, here's where we are after that first round of uh, uh, bending the tip open. So, you know, I thought there might be a kink at the end of the bite plate, and that would be at 14 units from the end. Um, so th that would have been like right about here. And actually I saw a little further back that it started bending really more like around here. So um, the rest of the curve is unchanged. And then I overshot it a little bit, especially on the right side. And it's a little flat now from the anvil. So the uh, tip only measures 103, but the problem is the next three readings are, are too, too low now. So I'm gonna tap it back and, and see if I can get this in a little. It's also a little crooked. Uh, the right rail is a little lower than the left. Okay, after another round, I didn't really tap on it much, but I broke out these uh, soft-jawed jaw pliers and bent, bent it back uh, and forth uh, to where it's a lot closer now. I actually ended up with a tip opening that's only 93, but you can see the next couple of readings back further are on the line. So uh, after flattening the table a little bit, I'll have enough room, um, you know, to straighten this out. And, you know, the tip has to be totally reshaped anyhow because it's, it's just mangled, essentially, but even before I worked on it. So um, opening that up a little will get us up to the tip opening that's the target and give enough um, material to reshape this to match a reed better. So um, we're... We're in good shape now. So after some extensive uh, refacing work anyhow, uh, well, extensive near the tip, um, this is the five, uh, opened up, not all by cutting. It was pretty much by bending for most of it. I had to do quite a bit of cutting at the tip rail because that was kind of flipped down and I wanted to come up. Um, and actually, I didn't take much off the table at all, um, but it's, it's real nice now. I'll show you, you know, the, see the original, the, the facing still has some gold plating on it. You see some silver and some gold. I don't think that's brass. I think, I think there's still gold streaks and it's just low spots where the silver is up here. This was already bare from use and, and facing work. Um. So you can see we got a nice uh, kind of rollover baffle and a nicely constructed tip rail now. A nice tip shape. And there is the bite repair. You know, there was a gouge right across the, uh, the front of this. Uh, maybe the, the new owner will probably maybe bite it more in the middle too. Um, you know, different people play differently, you know. For instance, someone also sent me this week the same era mouthpiece. This was a six, is it marked a six star? There it is, six star, and this one's a five. And uh, they just wanted the bike plate, but their gouge was kind of back here, past the halfway point. So different people play these things differently and uh, didn't want any facing work done on it, which is fine, uh, even though this one has, has kind of some tip rail where, you know, where the reed pounds, you can see where there's a low spot and then there's a little ridge, but as long as you keep putting your reed in the same spot, it won't hurt anything. So I already put in some acrylic on here. I haven't done the final final uh, shaping, but it's, uh, you know, kind of shows that it's uh, early Babbitt Super Tone Master week here. <laughs> 